I'm Peter Lyon and I was the swordsmith for The Lord of the Rings and a few other film projects since then, such as uh, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I work at Weta Workshop in Wellington, New Zealand, uh, where I help to make the props for the film projects. When I'm making a sword, my overriding thing, even if it's designed for use in front of the camera where weight and balance don't matter, I always want to make a sword to be a sword, not just a film prop. My early influences initially were fantasy role-playing games and I got interested in what was a bit more of the reality behind it and that got me into medieval reenactment and from there I started making equipment. My favourite sword of all that I've made for films has to be the Aureus two-handed sword. It was a big job, it's the most time-consuming sword that I've made. Everything worked and it looks really, really good. It's a really unique pommel, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. It looks right. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing too was that the pommel actually ended up the right sort of weight. If you tried to make a flat pommel to do the balance properly, it would have been really, really thick. Yeah. I first met Bob through Richard Taylor, the owner of Weta Workshop. Richard introduced me to Bob, and we got on really well. And on his more recent trip, where he was selecting the pieces for the exhibition, he stayed with us at our place. So I was able to actually sit down with them and uh, talk through things a lot more. I'm Bob Wisnam Savage and I'm curator of European Edged Weapons here at the Royal Armouries Leeds. The sword, I think, I've been most looking forward to showing Peter. Probably one of the, one of the most exciting swords, I think, in the collection, and I was hoping it was going to excite Peter as well, is a sword of about 1490. And it's complete. It's got its original wooden hilt and it's, uh, it's a bit of a stunner. To get my reference materials, I generally use books, sometimes documentaries. More recently I use the internet quite a bit. Uh, to actually get my hands on originals is, is virtually impossible in New Zealand, so I've had to rely on published material quite a lot. Okay. Well, Peter, you're holding Sting there, aren't you, which you made for the Lord of the yep. Rings motion picture trilogy. And uh, what's interesting is the, the shape of the blade. Uh, this is a Bronze Age sword basically 3,000 years old, but they both... It's so similar. Both sh share that mm -hmm. leaf-shaped blade. Even about the same length. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully in future now that I'm making contacts here that I might be able to ask for more information on particular pieces. It's a bit overwhelming actually, because I want to see everything, but there's so much that I can't actually take it all in in one shot. It does feel a little bit surreal actually handling an original <laughs> sword because I've been dreaming for probably 20 years <laughs> about being able to do this. What I'm hoping in the future is that if the resources available generally to sword makers and armourers that people that may not have access to the museums directly will be able to learn a lot quicker about how things work and be able to make high quality reproductions or fantasy pieces a lot quicker rather than doing what I did which was many years of trial and error and a lot, sometimes a lot of error. Actually being able to see the, the real original piece and to move around it and take photos of the details that I'm interested in is so useful.